Hello everyone, and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a bi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs, and businesses that have a lot to hide. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about the rise and fall of Papa John's. And honestly, a lot of this is just about their founder and more of a video about he self-destructed more than anything else. But I hope you still find it entertaining nonetheless. Anyway, let's start with how Papa John's was founded and what the hell happened in recent years. Let's get into it. Papa John's was founded by John H. Schnatter. According to the Courier Journal, he grew up in what he describes as an upper middle class family. His mother, Mary Beth Ackerson, is a retired real estate agent. Growing up, he said she was demanding. She wouldn't accept a B on his report card. His father, Robert Schnatter, and maternal grandfather, Louis Ackerman, were lawyers and entrepreneurs. Schnatter played shortstop at Jefferson High School. He excelled at math, mastering analytics that he would later use to build his company. He told the students in Naples that he got a 790 on his SAT in math out of 800, but only a 200 on the verbal portion. I have a real problem with the English language, he said. John's father founded solar heating, wine distribution, and cable TV companies. All of them failed to the point that the family's electricity and water occasionally was turned off. But John said he had the best of both worlds. His father was fun-loving and lighthearted, not afraid to take a risk, whereas his grandfather was frugal and conservative. John learned to take risks, but to make them work too. The roots of his enterprise were planted when he was 15 and working two jobs, unloading stock at Cut Rate Liquors in Jeffersonville by day and making pizzas down the road at Rocky's Sub Pub by night. He cast his fate with pizza because the profit margins were better, he said. At Rocky's, they'd sell a pizza for $10 and it cost $2 to make it, he told a conference of budding entrepreneurs many years later. I liked that. He took over Mix Lounge on September 29th, 1983, and seven months later, knocked down a broom closet to make way for a pizza oven. After selling his Camaro and asking a wealthy uncle to co-sign a banknote, he paid off half the tavern's debt and refinanced the rest. At only 22 years old, John had his own business, which is fantastic. I've got no issue with John so far and how he grew so quickly. By all accounts, John deserved the success. And he even won out after his first controversy. According to one source, Keeping his focus solely on pizza, the company grew spectacularly, went public in 1993, opened its 500th store in the next year and its 1500th four years after that. Business Week named it America's fastest growing company in 1994, and it ranked first on its list of 100 best run small businesses. Schnatter in 1999 landed on Fortune's 40 richest under 40 list, estimating his wealth at $402.6 million and he won a legal victory against number one Pizza Hut, dubbed the Pizza Holy War over Papa John's claim to sell better pizza. A jury decided that Papa John's claim was deceptive, awarding $467,619 to Pizza Hut in damages. But a federal appeals court reversed the verdict, finding that better ingredient slogan was so exaggerated that nobody was fooled by it. It was hardly a ringing endorsement, but Schnatter was vindicated. Nothing sells like the truth, Schnatter said during the Pizza Hut battle. And the truth is we do use better ingredients to make a better pizza. And I mean, look, I think it's pretty frustrating when I see commercials when companies that are specifically going after other companies and just kind of attacking each other, you know? I'd rather see a pizza place tell me why they're better than actually hear them talk smack on someone else. But by the same token, the fact that Papa John's actually won here is kind of hilarious. They literally said, we're better than Pizza Hut and a federal appeals court agreed with them. I really want to believe that this case was decided by a bunch of jurors or government officials having a blind pizza taste test party, though I'm sure that's not what happened. The point is Papa John's was by all accounts on top of the world, but around 1999, the cracks slowly began to show. Sexual harassment allegations were first. This wasn't about the company, but John Schnatter himself. Even though Papa John seemed untouchable for a while, money changed things as it seems to always do. I'm not saying if you become wealthy, you automatically turn into a horrible person, but rather money can most certainly bring out the worst in horrible people. As Forbes says, Schnatter moved the firm to a luxurious new headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky in the late 1990s. When he commissioned a fresco for one of its ceilings, he had his face painted into the plaster. 
His own office was outfitted with black marble and a fireplace. Schnatter sometimes conducted meetings from his exercise bike and was prone to outbursts. In one case, he moved a scorned executive's parking spot to the very back of the garage. Reached through a representative, Schnatter denied the incident. John had his tendency. When he was done with you, he was done with you, said Donna Alcorn, who left Papa John's in 2010 as a senior vice president and said she had a positive experience overall. That's why he's gone through so many executive teams in his life. One former executive says the married Schnatter would disappear for days on work trips, stirring suspicion that he was hooking up with girls. Schnatter denies this. In 1999, a mobile phone representative named Leslie Workman filed a lawsuit alleging that Schnatter groped her at a meeting after her party in a Louisville park, proceeded to stalk her, then asked her boss to send her to Papa John's to discuss a possible phone contract. Schnatter denied the allegations and filed a counterclaim alleging that she tried to extort $5 million from him and Papa John's. The case ended with a confidential settlement. John Schnatter and his wife have since divorced, but at that time, yes, he was married. I don't know what was happening at that time. I've truly got no clue exactly what the hell went on behind those very closed doors. But this is when things slowly began to take a turn for the worst. It didn't happen overnight or anything, but Papa John's gradually began losing its way. In 2004, 45 people were laid off at Papa John's headquarters and Schnatter was lashing out at fat and happy franchises that weren't making high quality pizza. Our system was asleep, he told pizzamarketplace.com a few years later. We were on our boats, on our yachts, on our golf club memberships, but we weren't paying attention to the fundamentals of the business. He now calls the stretch from 2001 to 2004 the toughest of his career. When you let quality slip, you pay for it and we paid for it. To their credit, Papa John's began straightening things out through a system of mystery shoppers. And in 2005, Schnatter took a three-year break to bring in professional management from the outside. So things seem to sort themselves out, at least for a little while. However, in 2009, yet more accusations were hurled at John, just as worrying as the one from 1999. One source claims, Forbes also reports that a 2009 incident involving a 24-year-old female marketing employee resulted in another confidential settlement, and anonymous sources say there have also been more settlements over the years. Meanwhile, sources say women at the company were subjected to harassing behavior from Schnatter and other male employees, such as being asked about their bra size or if they were menstruating. Schnatter also allegedly asked employees to spy on their colleagues and sometimes read workers' emails. Schnatter, through a representative, disputed most of the Forbes story. Again, I want to believe this was just a case of Schnatter losing his way and turning into a massive asshole with predatory behaviors. But I think what worries me most is how even after 10 years, his actions and language is still incredibly troubling and very similar. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Now that you know a bit about the environment Papa John's was in, let's get into where the decline truly began. But before we get into the decline of Papa John's, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Eating is something all of us have to do. So why make it such a difficult overbearing task? Well, that's where HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit steps in. HelloFresh offers 25 or more recipes to choose from every single week from vegetarian meals to burgers to extra special gourmet options. And it delivers it fresh right to your door. And HelloFresh's fresh ingredients are sourced directly from growers and delivered from the farm to your door in under a week every single Single time. And now they even have meals that are ready in 20 minutes or less. Like they have these um, sandwiches, what are they called? Caprese sandwiches, I think. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's the mozzarella and tomato on a nice ciabatta bun. It is so easy to make and it is so damn good. So if you wanna get started with HelloFresh today and upgrade your eating choices, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash casket12 and use code casket12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash casket12 Casket 12 and use code Casket 12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Today's episode is also sponsored by Jenny Kane, one of my favorite new sustainable clothing store companies. Now the temperatures are warming up. It's definitely getting a little more comfy out there. And in Colorado, even though it doesn't get too hot, it does get warm enough that a nice California cool vibe is exactly what I need. And Jenny Kane has exactly that. If you are looking to refresh your wardrobe with classically cool and comfortable and sustainable pieces of clothing, then Jenny Kane is 
is probably the store for you. I feel like I've talked a lot about their sustainability and that's something that's really important to me. Them choosing where they specifically source their fabrics from and choosing to use recycled goods is also really, really important to me. And another thing I really, really like about Jenny Kane is that they keep in mind that everyone should have accessibility to these types of luxurious staples of clothing. That's why they offer extended sizes from XX small all the way to 3X. So you can build and invest in your closet with beautiful mules, sweaters, pants, skirts, home decor pieces, whatever it is, you can do it and have peace of mind that the products you're buying are actually good. So if you wanna get started and find your forever pieces, make sure to go to jennycane.com and get 15% off your first order when you use code casket at checkout. Again, that's jennycane.com, use code casket at checkout. That's spelled J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E dot com. Papa John's had an official partnership with the NFL. They made it past that rough patch in the early 2000s and it shouldn't have been downhill from there, but it obviously wasn't or else I wouldn't be making this episode. The thing is, I think Schnatter is both the best and worst thing to happen to Papa John's. It wouldn't exist without him, yet at the same time, most of the controversies that I'm about to list are a case of Schnatter shooting himself in the foot with his own offensive comments. For example, in 2012, Schnatter said that Obamacare would hike up their pizza prices. As ABC explained, According to Papa John Schnatter, the cost of providing health insurance for all of his pizza chain uninsured full-time employees comes out to about 14 cents on a large pizza. That's less than adding an extra topping and a third the price of an extra pepperoncini. If you want that piping hot pie delivered, the $2 delivery fee will cost you 14 times as much as that health insurance price hike. We're not supportive of Obamacare, like most businesses in our industry, Schnatter said in a conference call with shareholders last week, as reported by Politico. If Obamacare is in fact not repealed, we will find tactics to shallow out any Obamacare costs and core strategies to pass that cost onto consumers in order to protect our shareholders' best interests. The Pizza Place's Facebook page was soon littered with outraged pizza lovers proclaiming they would be happy to pay an extra 11 to 14 cents so Papa John's employees could have health insurance. Look, if John wanted to explain why Papa John's does not support Obamacare, that's fine. I'm not going to agree with every company's views or every founder's views. If Papa John's wants to support Romney or Trump or other Republican candidates, I can't keep Schnatter from doing that either. And if he wanted to present some valid claims and concerns about Obamacare, that's his right to do so too. But the way Schnatter presented this is another matter entirely. Some even went far enough to say that this was like extortion. Papa John saying, vote for Mitt Romney or else their prices would go up. According to CNBC, some Twitter users are urging a boycott of the Kentucky-based pizza chain, but such reactions may be overdone. Was Schnatter making a political threat or simply explaining the economics of the pizza business? You be the judge. To me, the way he worded things may have been off-putting, absolutely, but John didn't just misspeak once, explain himself and move on. Since 2012 especially, he's consistently said questionable things that have torn down his reputation and Papa John's along with him. Before we talk more about John himself though, let's see how the company was doing around the same time. Another major event around this time was actually a class action lawsuit filed against the company after Papa John's was found to have underpaid their drivers. Then just a short while later, another lawsuit followed that one because Papa John's was illegally texting their customers. Like yikes. So let's go through and tackle these one at a time. As for underpaying their drivers, one source claims, according to the complaint, drivers were typically paid between $1 and $1.50 per delivery, regardless of distance, rather than the 45 to 55 cents per mile rate recommended by AAA and the IRS. That scheme cost the drivers $1.50 to $5.33 per hour, giving them a net hourly pay ranging from $1.48 to $5.75, according to the lawsuit. The net effect of Papa John's flawed reimbursement policy instituted and approved by company managers is that they willfully fail to pay the federal minimum wage to their delivery drivers, the suit states. Defendants thereby enjoy ill-gained profits at the expense of their employees. Phone calls to a Papa John spokeswoman and to the plaintiff's attorneys were not returned. The $12.3 million settlement took a large bite out of Papa John's second quarter earnings. 
After deducting for the expected settlement payment, its quarterly profit fell 36% to $10.8 million. The proposed settlement is subject to court approval. So just to be clear here, this wasn't some little oopsie where Papa John's was paying on the low end of a recommendation or a few cents under. Papa John's was paying their drivers as little as $2 an hour. I know that these drivers, waitresses, and a lot of food service workers are underpaid because they're counting on tips, but let's be realistic here. If someone is ordering a pizza that's between 10 to $20, it's not like their tip is going to be a living wage for an employee. Food service jobs, especially those as big as Papa John's, should be responsible for making sure their employees are taken care of. After all, what right does a business have to operate if it can't even take care of the employees that it claims to employ? Plus, does anyone else notice the massive amount of hypocrisy here? Like seriously, a couple minutes ago, John was complaining that Obamacare didn't allow him to properly take care of his employees without raising prices. And yet since 2009, their drivers were grossly underpaid. Now, as for the next lawsuit, Papa John's had to pay $16.5 million because of these unwanted texts, which if you ask me, is just one of the stupidest lawsuits I've seen in quite some time. And that's on Papa John's part, I mean. It's one thing if someone signs up for text message alerts for coupons, but for them to get a private cell number without permission, that's pretty tasteless. Get it, tasteless? I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. But anyway, Top Class Action said the following. The Papa John's text settlement will resolve a 2010 class action lawsuit that accuses the pizza chain of sending more than 500,000 illegal text messages to Papa John's customers advertising pizza specials. The text messages were illegal, plaintiffs say, because they were sent without the customer's consent and with the use of an automatic dialing system in violation of the TCPA. Papa John's International has vigorously denied any wrongdoing from the start of the case, arguing that customers gave consent to the messages when they provided their telephone numbers when purchasing a pizza. The company also argued that as a franchisor, it is not liable for the actions of its franchisees, which were the ones who hired the marketing company on time for you to send the text messages. U.S. District Judge John C. Cohenar rejected the argument in November when he granted class certification to the Papa John's text class action lawsuit. Contrary to Papa John's position that it played no role in those decisions, Papa John's has produced documents that indicate that it did play some role in the franchisee level decisions to hire on time for you. The lawsuits still did not end here though. Although these were by far the most financially damaging within that timeframe, Panera Bread also came after Papa John's in 2016, accusing an executive of stealing trade secrets. In 2016, Papa John said they didn't even consider them, Panera, a competitive business, so they wouldn't steal their secrets, but Panera argued that their expansion plans and tech was what Papa John's considered worth taking. Late 2016, Panera dropped this suit, but not after it did yet more damage to Papa John's reputation. Even if it wasn't all that newsworthy or didn't even go viral at the time, all these lawsuits and bad press really began to set the stage for Papa John's downfall. But we don't have to wait long for that to happen because it was only a year later in 2017 when this happened. And just like we've seen in the past, John did it to himself. So we've finally hit the big one here, their controversy with the NFL. If you'll recall, they were once the official pizza of the NFL. However, in 2017, John Schnatter was commenting on the peaceful protest that football players were taking, kneeling during the national anthem. Here's the thing. He didn't say, oh, I don't agree with this form of protesting or express his opinion on the matter in a rational way. Because even though I disagree with him, if he said that, I can respect someone else's opinion, whether or not it falls in line with my values. No, what Papa John did is so infuriating. And what they did was they blamed their poor sales on the NFL controversy. And I wish I was joking, but here's what Forbes said. The net worth of John Schnatter, founder and CEO of pizza chain Papa John's fell $70 million in less than 24 hours after the company released its third quarter financial report on Tuesday afternoon. The business beat estimates on earnings and revenue, but it lowered guidance on same store sales for the coming period. Investors were not pleased with that news and sent shares down 11% through 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. The stock is now trading at just over $60 per share. 
One casualty on the slide was Shatner's personal fortune. The 55-year-old who owns roughly 25% of Papa John's is now worth $801 million, Forbes estimates. Schnatter blames part of the downturn on the National Football League, which has faced turbulence amid widespread national anthem protests in the past year. The NFL has hurt us by not resolving the current debacle, he said on a conference call on Wednesday. Papa John's is the league's official pizza sponsor. Oh boy, John, what were you thinking? Were you not thinking when you made that statement? The answer is probably he wasn't thinking. He's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and yet I don't know if the guy has a single brain cell left in his head. First of all, if your pizza doesn't sell, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's something up with your pizza? What about that blind taste test? Why not make sure your quality hasn't fallen down the tubes again? Secondly, how stupid do you have to be to badmouth your own sponsor? They're the official pizza of the NFL, but then John goes on to blame the NFL for their loss in business. I feel real bad for anyone working under John because I'm pretty confident in saying that this is entirely his own doing. I don't want to think that all the Papa John's executives are this ignorant about, well, simply not smack talking their biggest sponsor they could ever hope to have. But in case you don't know how messed up John's commentary was, let me put it to you this way. It earned him the support of white supremacists. Quartz put out an article that reads the following. The pizza chain CEO, John Schnatter, donated to Donald Trump's campaign and opposes Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. But it was his attack on the NFL for its response to kneeling players, blaming it for disappointing slow pizza sales that rallied the far right to the company. The NFL has hurt us, he said of the league, which Papa John officially sponsors. We are totally disappointed that the NFL and its leadership did not resolve the ongoing situation to the satisfaction of all parties long ago, Shatter told investors. Hmm, Shatter, that's a slip of the tongue, but I'm keeping it. No other NFL sponsors would confirm declining sales as a result of the controversy. The comment inspired neo-Nazi Andrew Anglin of the website Daily Stormer to declare Papa John's the official pizza of the Aryan master race. Other alt-right figures then launched a boycott of Pizza Hut for its CEO's statement that the NFL protest had not hurt its sales. The Daily Stormer then featured a pizza with a pepperoni arranged in a swastika to mark the occasion. Papa John's Twitter tried to take it back and say they condemn racism and hate groups, but it was kinda too little too late. Their CEO was starting to show his true colors and the company had to act quickly before Papa John himself would hurt his business again. A month after the apologetic tweets, Schnatter stepped down as CEO and two months after that, Papa John's and NFL parted ways. Hell, even NFL star Peyton Manning sold his stake in Papa John's restaurants in the Denver area. It's unclear if it was because of Schnatter's comments, but the timing is pretty coincidental. Now, you might think this is the end. The Papa John himself has stepped down and the pizza chain continued to move on without him. To some extent it is, but we're unfortunately not done with John just yet. July 11, 2018, Forbes reports Schnatter allegedly used the N word on a conference call with the marketing agency Laundry Service in May. During a role-playing exercise for Schnatter to avoid future controversies, he was asked how he distanced himself from racist groups. Colonel Sanders called blacks N-words, he reportedly responded, complaining the KFC founder never faced public backlash for alleged racism. He also reportedly said in his home state of Indiana, people used to drag African-Americans from their trucks to their deaths. He reportedly meant to indicate he was against racism, but the comment still offended some people on the call. News reports attributing the use of inappropriate and hurtful language to me during a media training session regarding race are true, Schnatter told Forbes in a statement. Regardless of the context, I apologize. Simply stated, racism has no place in our society. So because someone else in the past food chain has used a racial slur and didn't face public backlash, that means John shouldn't face public backlash for literally saying the N word? Okay. First of all, the family of Colonel Sanders said this was an absolute lie. CNBC reported Sanders' grandson, Trig Adams, told the Louisville, Kentucky Courier Journal on Wednesday that is an absolute lie that Sanders used the racial slur or any other racially offensive words. He's a weasel, Adams said of Schnatter, according to the report. Because he's prejudiced, he's trying to say somebody else was too. Sanders had absolutely no prejudice against anybody. 
Sanders, who died in 1980, donated more than $20 million to charities, including to black churches, which he sometimes attended, Adams added. But even if Colonel Sanders had used those terms, that doesn't make it okay. Like people get away with crimes all the time and it's not an excuse to go and commit more of those types of crimes. Maybe Colonel Sanders did get away with saying that racist slur 40 years ago, but John using that as an excuse is pathetic and wholly unrelated. His apology just comes off as extremely hollow to me. Like he's only saying it because people were pissed off at him now. He even stepped down as chairman from the board and now his image will no longer appear on pizza boxes or in their shops. They literally erased him from their branding. And that's a yikes. So what did John do? Papa John himself? Well, he threw a fit and sued Papa John's of course. On July 26, 2018, CNN Business explained, in a lawsuit filed in Delaware Chancery Court on Thursday, Schnatter's lawyers said he is seeking to inspect company documents because of the unexplained and heavy handed way in which the company has treated him since the publication of a story that falsely accused him of using a racial slur. Papa John's denied Schnatter's claims in a statement. The company said it was saddened and disappointed by the lawsuit, which it called needless and wasteful. But hey, disappointing people is what John himself is all about though. Throughout this entire episode, he's had some nasty allegations hurled at him time after time, and he's been careless and thrown around racist slurs. So yeah, I can't really say I'm surprised he'd pull a move like this either. The guy has a sprawling mansion, he's nearly a billionaire, and he owns so much land in Anchorage that people have joked he may as well call it Schnatterville. So make no mistake, he doesn't need the money. John sued Papa John's because he was trying to prove a point. But if you ask me, the only point he made was that even when he's wrong, he's a stubborn, bitter bitch. So as much as I hate to make it so personal, his now ex-wife pretty much said the same thing publicly. CNBC reported in late 2019 that in July, 2018, Schnatter stepped down after Forbes reported that he used a racial slur on a May conference call with Landry Services, an advertising agency that Papa John's was working with at the time. After leaving Papa John's, Schnatter filed several lawsuits against the pizza chain before settling. Since then, he has been selling off his stake in the company. The lawsuit filed Thursday alleges that Laundry Service recorded the May conference call with Schnatter without his knowledge. A dispute allegedly arose with the ad firm in June, 2018 over whether Papa John's owned Laundry Service payment for work as the company's media buyer. The lawsuit claims that Casey Wasserman, CEO of Laundry Service's parent company, Wasserman Media, then told Papa John's then CEO, Steve Ritchie, that he would bury the founder if the ad agency was not paid $6 million. The lawsuit claims that Laundry Service leaked excerpts of the conference call to Forbes, breaching the advertising firm's non-disclosure agreement with Papa John's. The facts will show that my words were taken out of context and used to manufacture a scandal against me based on a completely false narrative, Schnatter said in a statement. Last week, Schnatter said in an interview with Fox affiliate WDRB in Louisville, Kentucky, that the day of reckoning will come. He also claimed that Papa John's pizza tasted different than it used to, claiming he had eaten more than 40 pizzas in 30 days. Papa John's current CEO, Rob Lynch, on Wednesday said the recipe for the pizza had not been changed. Separately, Schnatter's wife filed for divorce on Thursday under her maiden name, M. Annette Cox. She called the couple's marriage irrevitably broken in her petition for divorce. The couple has been married for 32 years and separated in April, according to the divorce filing. The filing also pointedly noted that Schnatter is not employed. Schnatter says all net proceeds from the lawsuit will go to charity and I can't exactly blame him for not being employed when he could easily live off his hundreds of millions of dollars. But as for the rest of this, it does seem pretty pointless. I don't think a false narrative was spun here. Not when Schnatter apologized for saying the word and his actions afterwards. He just can't take it back and act as if it's never happened because he's going to court for it now. These advertising groups he's suing have essentially said the same thing in early 2020. The first portion of their response said the following. Plaintiff John Schnatter now seeks to blame others for his behavior. Applicable law demonstrates that Schnatter, the television pitchman to millions, is the architect of his own demise. And I couldn't have said that better myself. John was the downfall of Papa John's. Now it's just Papa, I guess? Papa John's without the John in it? Hell, this isn't even the only lawsuit that Papa John's brand has even faced recently. 
There's another one that came to a recent conclusion over workers not receiving wages during training. And even though Schnatter has donated $1 million to Simmons College, a historically an African-American school, Insider has described him as, quote, trying to pay off the black community. In interviews, he looks strange, sounds a bit unhinged, and well, I don't think those 40 pizzas in 30 days are sitting all that well with him. Other less reported on racist controversies have resurfaced because of this too. Like back in 2012, when a customer named Min Hee Cho said that a Papa John's employee wrote her name on her order as Lady Chinky Eyes. Neither Papa John's or John himself seem to be out of the woods yet, and they are both coming out of this looking worse for wear. Yet again, this is just another reminder, as if we needed more, about how wealth and power can really bring out the worst in someone. Oh, and as a recent like 2021 update here, he put out a statement where apparently he said he's been working on not saying the N-word as much and great. I didn't realize it was that much part of your vocabulary that you had to train yourself to stop saying it, but that's a little nugget for you too. As we end today's episode though, I want to give you one piece of poetic justice. You remember how at the start, Papa John said they were better than Pizza Hut, how they even won a lawsuit over it? Well, guess who's the official pizza of the NFL now? Pizza Hut. So with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket on Papa John's. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the recent uploads. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure to click my Linktree link in the description box so that you can connect with me on social media and all the other various projects that I'm also working on. Thank you so much for making it to another episode of The Corporate Casket. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.